Since March, I've been speaking on the Senate floor about the 198 North Dakotans who died while serving our country in Vietnam. But today I'm gonna to talk about something a little different. I'm gonna talk about projects that were made by the Bismarck High uh, School juniors in commemoration of these servicemen who gave the ultimate sacrifice in Vietnam. Three Bismarck High teachers, Laura Forty, Sarah Renus, and Allison Wendell, are working with their history and English class students to research the lives and deaths of North Dakota's fallen servicemen in Vietnam. I'm partnering with these high school students to learn about and to honor these men. In addition to conducting research, contacting families, and writing essays about these North Dakotans who died in Vietnam, the Bismarck High students took this information and created artifacts to further honor these men. It's their goal to place these artifacts by the soldiers' names at the Vietnam Memorial Wall when these students come to Washington, D.C. this fall. Over 150 students worked in groups or individually to create some truly amazing artifacts. It was difficult to single out a few to share with you today on the Senate floor, but know that the artifacts I describe today are truly examples of this wonderful project that has connected these young students with the stories and the families of the young men who gave their lives for our country almost 50 years ago. The first artifact I'll show you is for John Lundin. Mackenzie Riddle, Emily Schmidt, uh, Brittany Hawkinson, and Shelby Wittenberg are Bismarck High Juniors who reached out to John Lundin's son and daughter-in-law, Ray and Cheryl Lundin. The girls learned that John wanted to be a farmer after completing his army service and painted a farm scene on the scoop of a shovel. On the, on the shovel's handle, they wrote John's date of birth and death in purple to represent his Purple Heart Medal. Also on the handle, they painted a bronze star and a silver star, medals that John earned while in service. John's family worked with the students to commemorate John's service. They mailed the students soil from Kansas, where John intended to farm, and a small John Deere tractor on the lid. The students placed the Kansas soil in a jar with North Dakota soil and put a tractor on the lid. If it works out, John's son and daughter-in-law may try and join the students in visiting the Vietnam Memorial Wall in November to place these artifacts by John's name. Hunter Lauer and Kara Wetzel paired up to research the life and death of Roy Wagner, who was a student at Bismarck High about 50 years before them. In high school, Roy was a lineman on the football team and Roy, uh, wore number 62. Hunter and Kara decorated a Bismarck High football jersey with Roy's last name and wrote his dates of birth, deployment, and death in the number six and the medals he received for his service and sacrifice in the number two. Hunter and Kara compared Roy's football position as a guard to his army position on the battlefield protecting his comrade and his friends. Hoping that his tribute to Navy seaman Mitchell Hansey will last a long time, Bismarck High student Logan Molman decided to carve Mitchell's name into a piece of wood. Learning that Hansey served on the Navy APL 30 barge during his entire tour, Logan hand carved the full APL 30 emblem into wood and then protected the project with a coat of lacquer. The emblem consists of stars and stripes on the left, three bars on the right, and an apple in the middle for APL, or auxiliary personnel lighter. Logan is looking forward to the placement of his project in honor of Mitchell at the Vietnam Wall. Ashley Erickson, Caleb Konzitz, and Sam Stewart are the three students who researched the life and death of Marine Corps Captain Ernest Bartolina. Bartolina. Ernest was flying a Chinook helicopter on a medevac mission when his helicopter was shot down and he was killed. To honor him, the students placed a small Purple Heart medal on a model Chinook helicopter. They decorated the board that holds the helicopter with music notes because Ernest played the French horn and with the Marine Corps and Purple Fox's emblem to represent that he belonged to the 
HMM 364 Squadron. Caden Freeman also created an artifact to commemorate the lives of Ernest Bartolina. Caden drew Ernest Chinook medevaced helicopter in a jungle setting of Vietnam. In the helicopter, he incorporated photos of men who serve in Vietnam, stating, the reason I made this collage of the soldiers in Vietnam was to represent Ernest Bartolina and the fallen soldiers of the war with the medevac in which he died in. I think that this is a good representation of him because he volunteered to be in the war. Bismarck High student Shady Pretenzegel and Private First Class Robert Alberts are both from Spirit Lake Sioux Reservation in North Dakota. It is this connection that led Shady to research Roger's life and decide to make by hand a God's eye for the lost son of the Sioux tribe. She hand wove the yarn of her God's eye in red and yellow. She hand beaded 37E, the panel location of Roger's name on the Vietnam wall in black and white. These four colors are the colors of the medicine wheel, very important colors to the Native American culture. Let me read what Shandy said in her own words about honoring PFC Alberts. I decided to make a God's eye because as Native Americans, we believe that everything belongs to the creator, the land, the animals, the food we eat, and ourselves. We believe that this life on earth is only temporary. We believe we were put here to grow, love and learn, and then we to return home. Our culture has made most natives artists. Some of the things we do consists of beadwork, feather work, quill work, cloth work, buckskin work, painting, and dentilium work. All of it is made by hand, which means whatever we decide to make, we put our mind, hearts, and time into. Our elders say, always do things with a good heart, because the energy and vibes we have at the time stays with whatever we are making, which is why I hope I put the best in the God's eye. Taylor Anderson, Austin Wetzel, and Mariah Lear are 11th graders who created a large F410 phantom plane, F4D phantom plane, to leave at the Vietnam Memorial Wall in honor of Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Wendell Keller. The students contacted Wendell's family, who shared the mementos and the photos of Wendell, and told them about Wendell's life, the 1969 plane crash, and the 2013 identification of his remains. The family even mailed the students items recovered from Wendell's crash site, including pieces of a zipper and an air tube. Austin, Tyler, and Mariah built and decorated the plane with images of Wendell and the medals he was awarded in recognition of his extraordinary service. The students named the plane the Carol II in honor of Wendell's wife. Brenna Gilgey, Courtney Hirvala, learned of Captain Thomas Alderson's, was a multi-sport athlete. He lettered in tennis, basketball, and track when he was a student at Grand Forks Central High School. Brenna and Courtney contacted the school to obtain the school letters and had a dog tag made with Tom's information on it. In their report, these girls noted, this letter represents Alderson's high school years and it can easily be related to a lot of teenage boys today. The letter with the dog tag shows how quickly he had to grow up and mature in such a short amount of time. As Alderson joined the military, he turned in his letter along with his childhood for a dog tag. When Kayla, Michaela Baim began her project, she looked at different soldiers' names to find the right person to research. She noticed one of the killed in action had the same last name as hers, and she started to look into the soldier's family tree and her own family tree. Michaela found that, Amy, uh, that Army Sergeant Richard Baim was a cousin to her grandfather. Michaela decided to draw a family tree to show how she was related to Sergeant Baim. This connection made the project that much more meaningful to Michaela. She had no idea she was related to a soldier who was killed in action in Vietnam. Michaela added some information about Richard by his name on her family tree and wrote a note to him. She thanked him for his service and expressed her desire that he were still with us so she could have gotten to know him. This project also emphasized for Michaela 
the importance of appreciating family and friends because you never know when people who are close to you may be taken away. Nicole Holmgren, Tiffany Fries, and Brandy Bieber, and Georgia Marion looked for Gerald Jerry Klein's family members and spoke on the form, phone with Jerry's brother, Bob. Bob told the students about Jerry's life growing up in rural North Dakota, about being the oldest of five kids, and working on the family farm. In fact, Bob explained to the girls that Jerry made the farm his priority, choosing to spend all of his free time there. The four students created a farm complete with grass, tractors, rocks, and farm animals to represent the place where Jerry felt happiest, on a farm where he planned to return and make his life with his fiancée after serving in the Army. J.C. Walter and Cambry Shaner decorated a fishing hat to commemorate Thomas Welker, a staff sergeant who served in Vietnam in the Army. The students learned that prior to being drafted, Thomas enjoyed spending his free time fishing with his young family. On the fishing hat, J.C. and Cambry wrote Thomas's name, date of birth, and his date of death. On eight fishing lures they hung from the hat, they wrote the names of Thomas's family members and the awards he received during his service to our country. Bailey McIver, Tegan uh, McIntyre, and Shandy Tex and Maisie Patzner filled a fishing tackle box with items that were important to Michael Myhoff, who served in the Army during Vietnam. These four students communicated with Michael's family, who described Michael's interest in baseball, rock collecting, hunting, and fishing. The students filled the tackle box with baseballs, rocks, shotgun shells, and fishing lures to represent his hobbies. They also decorated the box with pictures of Michael and the baseball field in center North Dakota that is named after him. Finally, in the final photo I will show you today is of a young man who was impacted in a very meaningful way in his research. Zach Bolin, a talented student who carved a piece of wood into the shape of North Dakota. Zach added a peace sign in the soldier's name and then expressed his own feelings about the sacrifice made in Vietnam uh, and made by the Vietnam soldier he researched. I'd like to share with you the beautiful sentiment expressed by Zach through his project. The empty chair, the absence of one voice in the air, emotions take over with fear, you're all I can't hear. Damn the options of the world, opinions of the world. It's only filled with selfish words. Scream and never be heard. Keep quiet, carry on, sir. Bring with you your heartfelt rhymes from the uncharted waters of your mind and take your wounded skin and fly. It takes true love to sacrifice your life. This project has meant so much to the families of the soldiers who have been researched. This family has, this project has meant so much to these young children who are connected in a way that without this, the, these three great teachers, they would never have been connected to those who were killed in action in Vietnam. They would never have appreciated the sacrifice. And in many ways, these soldiers would never be remembered. And so um, I can't tell you how proud I am as uh, their United States Senator of the wonderful students of Bismarck High and the great teachers who have taken on this project. It has meant so much to me. It has meant so much to the families. And I think really meant so much to so many of the Vietnam veterans of my state who are still with us, who see this period of commemoration as dictated by the, by the president as an important time to heal the wounds of Vietnam.